So the building was built in about 1914, originally planned as a shopping arcade and converted into apartments in around 2005. This apartment is roughly about 50 square metres, but it looks a lot bigger because it's got really quite high ceilings. My name is Daniel Doral and I'm an architect turned artist. So when I first got this apartment, it looked quite different. Um, it was orientated differently towards the eastern side and it had carpet and tiles on the floors. So I kept the floor plan roughly about the same, but I did get rid of the laundry area and made that into a separate entrance into the bathroom. I'm a modernist at heart more on hard edge modernism. So I'm quite interested in quite hard materials like concrete. I wanted a consistent floor material and so we dug out all the tiles and the carpets and ground the concrete down. I also added a concrete bench uh, in this awkward nook in the living area. And in that nook area, I added a concrete fireplace. In the kitchen area, the main focal point is the concrete bench, which I designed myself. So it's roughly about two by one meters, and it has a waterfall side on one side, which really accentuates the concrete brutalist architecture. Below the concrete bench top, I added additional IKEA storage, which I hacked into the space. The large surface of uh, two by one meters also allowed me to not only use it as a dining table, but for prep and any cooking that I might want to do, but essentially to make the work that I make as well. So the design of the kitchen is generally the same as how when I first purchased it. Uh, the main two things that I changed was I introduced a uh, mirrored splashback um, to add another dimension to the space. I also decided to get rid of all the door handles and have this really clean, modern look and repaint all the doors in a high gloss white. So the bedroom is a regular size room, but it has quite high ceilings, up to three and a half meters. I decided to utilize the height of the room to create additional storage. Two main elements that I added was a much larger wardrobe which went all the way up to the ceiling and a purpose-built study as well which also provided additional storage space all the way up to the 3.5 meter ceiling. So I decided to keep the bathroom as original the only main change was to remove the laundry area, which made the bathroom a lot bigger. And that laundry area was converted into a separate entrance through the kitchen. I created a European style laundry, putting the washing washer dry unit above the newly placed hot water unit. So the entrance to the apartment comes through a corridor which is roughly about three meters long. And in this corridor space, I've created a gallery area with a salon hang. So as you move through the corridor, it reveals a much grander, brighter open plan area. So one of the main things that attracted to me to this apartment when I first came to see it was it's got a large bank of windows on the eastern side which is roughly about five by three meters. It offers a great view out towards the east and then Nongs. There are quite a few IKEA hacks within the apartment. One being the shelf uh, below the eastern windows where the books and small objects are held. The balcony area which faces south allows me to get out and get some fresh air and do a little bit of gardening as well. 
I collect a lot of objects and I collect a lot of art and therefore my, the style of the apartment needed to be quite neutral so there are a lot of whites and uh, greys and blues as well. Concrete elements in small spaces is quite unusual but if done right it can really act as a good backbone to the different objects within the space. And the best way to display them in a small space is to group them in small compositions, which creates a good visual balance. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to our Never Too Small channel by clicking on the logo and the notification bell to receive updates on our latest episode.